Shalom in the Lord and welcome to the broadcast. My name is Dr. Michael Weiss with Zion's Hope. I've been defining end times terms biblically and addressing why it matters. These are common terms within the Bible or the study of eschatology or the end times and I've discussed a variety of topics so far. Today I want to cover something I believe has been very misunderstood and misdefined for decades. I don't say this out of pride but just looking at the biblical text we can see this concept of a seven year tribulation is not there. But Jesus does talk about and defines the great tribulation. You find this in Daniel 12 1, Matthew 24 15 through 30, Mark 13 14 through 35 and Revelation 6 verses 9 through 11 and chapter 7 9 through 14. Going to read a few of those and then we'll continue our study. Daniel 12 1. And now at that time, Michael, the great prince who stands guard over the sons of your people will arise. And there will be a time of distress such as never occurred since there was a nation until that time. And at that time, your people, everyone who's found written in the book will be rescued. Matthew 24, 15 through 16 and verse 21. Therefore, when you see the abomination of desolation, which was spoken of through Daniel the prophet, standing in the holy place, let the reader understand, then those who are in Judea must flee to the mountains. For then there will be great tribulation, such as not occurred since the beginning of the world until now, nor ever will. Mark 13, 14 through 35 talks about the same event with similar language. That brings us to Revelation 6, verses 9 through 11. And this is in the context of the fifth seal. When the Lamb broke the fifth seal, I saw underneath the altar the souls of those who had been killed because of the word of God and because of the testimony they had maintained. And they cried out with a loud voice saying, How long, O Lord, holy and true, will you refrain from judging and avenging our blood on those who live on the earth? And a white robe was given to each of them. And they were told that they were to rest for a little while longer until the number of their fellow servants and their brothers who were to be killed, even as they had been, was yet completed or was completed also. Revelation 7, verses 9 and 10, and then 13 through 14. After these things I looked, and behold, a great multitude, which no one could count, from every nation and all tribes, peoples, and languages, standing before the throne and before the Lamb clothed in white robes and palm branches were in their hands and they cried out with a loud voice saying salvation belongs to our God who sits on the throne and to the lamb. Then one of the elders responded saying to me these who are clothed in white robes who are they and where have they come from? I said to him my Lord you know and he said to me these are the ones who came out of or come out of the great tribulation and they have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. Now some confuse the Great Tribulation with the seven year period. This is also sometimes called the time of Jacob's trouble. Jeremiah 30 verse 7, Daniel 12 1, Matthew 24 verse 21 which I'll talk about later. But this is not so. It's not the seven year period. Jesus and the rest of scripture is clear. The Great Tribulation does not start until after what? the abomination of desolation is set up. I've addressed this before and I've defined it as the placement of an image of a man into the temple built for God. This yet future event is connected to the great tribulation of which Jesus speaks. And as a reminder, the abomination of desolation occurs during the midpoint of Daniel's 70th week or that seven year time frame. The Antichrist and of course the false prophet working with him sets up this image and demands worship. Most of the world will obey him and follow him and take his mark. However, some will not do it. Namely true Christians, some Jews and there's some Gentiles aside from the 144,000 that God seals for his own purposes. Let me ask you this. What do you think will happen to those who refuse to bow down before this imposter God. They will be hunted like animals and murdered and martyred for those who follow Christ. They will be seen as enemies of the state and more. The Great Tribulation again begins at the middle of Daniel's 70th week and is a time when the nation of Israel 
and Christians will experience the greatest persecution that we have ever known. It will impact the world, but it will be centered in Israel. And though the great tribulation begins in the middle of Daniel's 70th week, it does not continue until the end. It will be cut short by the cosmic disturbance. Matthew 24, 22, Mark 13, 24, and 25. Therefore, the great tribulation is not God's wrath. It is Satan's wrath. It is connected with the fifth seal of Revelation 6 and the multitude in Revelation 7, 14. And Jews and Christians will be martyred or murdered at that time. Those who follow the Lord will be targeted by Antichrist and his cohorts prior to the return of Christ. While we are not yet there at this point, and many specifics of course to us at this time are a mystery, there are things that are clear. The Great Tribulation will be the most intense persecution Jews and Christians have faced or will ever face. World War II will pale in comparison to the fury, the intensity, and the hatred that the Antichrist and those who follow him will have for the Jewish people and the followers of Christ. And that brings me to the next phrase. The time of Jacob's trouble. I just mentioned it. Jeremiah chapter 30 verse 7, Daniel 12, 1, Luke 21 verses 20 through 24. We read some of these now. Jeremiah 30 verse 7. Alas, for that day is great and there is none like it. And it is the time of Jacob's distress or trouble. But he will be safe from it. I've already read Daniel 12, 1. I'm not going to read that again. But in Luke 21, verses 20 through 24, we read these words. The words of Jesus. But when you see Jerusalem surrounded by armies, then recognize that her desolation is near. Then those who are in Judea must flee to the mountains, and those who are inside the city must leave. And those who are in the country must not enter the city, because these are the days of punishment or vengeance, so that all things which have been written will be fulfilled. Woe to those women who are pregnant, and to those who are nursing babies in those days. For there will be great distress upon the land and wrath to this people. And they will fall by the edge of the sword and will be led captive into all the nations. And Jerusalem will be trampled underfoot by the Gentiles until the times of the Gentiles are fulfilled. Sometimes this time of Jacob's trouble or distress is called the great tribulation. And it's a time for Israel. Go back and read Jeremiah 30 because that gives the full context. It will be a time of sorrow, but God will also rescue and restore them out of it. But you may ask, why is this happening? This is God's chastening on his people Israel because of their sins. Jeremiah 30 verse 15. How? Through the Gentile nations. Chapter 30 verse 11. And it's probably also connected to Zechariah 13 verses 8 and 9 which refers to the two-thirds of the Jewish nation that will be killed in the last of the last days. But God will bring one-third through and refine them. Luke's words focus on the destruction of Jerusalem in 70 AD but I want to remind you that that was a picture of a more intense persecution or trouble for the Jewish people still in the future. God chastened the Israelites in the past through Gentile nations. Yes, he did it to the Babylonians and the Egyptians and uh, so many others. And even to this day. And he will do so again during Daniel's 70th week in the time of Jacob's trouble, which some would call the Great Tribulation. However, we have to remember that the entire last seven years is going to be part of it because God completes his cycle of judgment upon Israel during that time. But Israel will be persecuted. And I've addressed persecution before, but it's appropriate to mention it again, particularly if you're new to the series. Christians around the world today are persecuted. Yes, we see it some in America and other places in the West, through government regulations or maybe even our personal lives. Maybe losing a job because we are standing for biblical principles and biblical ethics and morality, or even in our own families. These are painful. I do not want to minimize someone's loss or pain. But I have to say this. The intensity that is coming will be much greater. And it is even today for many of our Christian brethren throughout the world. Who are hunted, lose their lives, killed, murdered, martyred, hated. 
just because they follow Jesus. I encourage you, read their stories. Look up ministries online to persecuted Christians and learn from them how they find strength in the battle, how they find courage to proclaim Christ in a world that hates them and in a culture and a context that hates them. We need to learn from them. Don't put your head in the ground and think that, well, persecution pain is not going to impact me. It will. And you and I need to be ready for it. And we need to be preparing others for it too. So, if you're a Christian leader, are you preparing others for persecution? Are we ready to face it? Are we serious about our walk with Jesus while things are easy? What's going to happen when times get tough? And you and I wonder, what is going on? Where are we going to turn? How much do we know this word? And are we trusting in the God who gave us his word? And last, are we praying for the peace of Jerusalem? I'm Dr. Michael Weiss with Zion's Hope. Be sure to visit our website, zionshope.org. Find us on Facebook, Twitter, Parler, and come to our YouTube channel and subscribe. We have hundreds of videos, end times, and much more from our very gifted Bible teachers. Also on our website, we have books, articles, and lots of resources that are available as well. So until next time, be strong in the Lord until he returns.